I started writing songs regularly and with a passion when I was about 13 and they got good or some of them got good I think at 15 and uh, we've, uh, we've, for our first three or four albums there was always at least one song that I had written when I was 15. Even beyond that. Yeah, maybe Every longer. album. Um, what about the Freak Magnet? I don't know. Almost every album. Uh, so. That's just that's just what I did, and it was was a, a huge thing for me. I remember sometimes uh, uh, feeling bad about what was happening at school or things in my life, and then just that feeling of, let's say, over this weekend, I'm gonna write a, a great song, and or one that I think is a great song. And if I do, then it's like somehow makes everything worthwhile, or makes makes me feel like I've accomplished something or something yeah, that, that means something to me as opposed to homework or this other thing or other thing that I didn't think was of any importance at all. At a certain point, um, uh, a friend of mine said you need to start playing songs in front of more than just somebody sitting in the living room or a friend of yours, like this friend, you know. And, just, and so he went out and got me uh, uh, at a coffee shop or two places that would let anybody come and play. And, then, <laughs> and uh, so then I went. And it, basically he, he, he made me do it. He like got the guitar and he says like, I'm, you know, Physically, I'm dragging you there. I was gonna wait and not play publicly until after I was done with high school and uh, then like escaping the prison and going to New York City which is where I'd always had family and where I had been born and where I had visited and felt like that was the place I wanted to be and most of the music I was listening to was coming out of New York City and so my friend got me out playing in Milwaukee at these coffee shops and then I ran into uh, got introduced or Brian Ritchie came up to me and introduced himself to me. We started playing music together and uh, initially it was going, it was planned to be temporary. That was our plan, just play in the summer of 1981. And then uh, 
plans changed and, and we're still not, you know, we're here. When I was 15, I took my first trip on my own uh, and visited my bro one of my brothers was living in New York City and uh, and I visited him and uh, he took me to CBGB's Max's Kansas City was in, and a uh, bunch of places and that's when I heard Johnny Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers uh, and and just was just. That for me was the most exciting concert ever. Was at Max's Kansas City, which is also an album that they put out right at that same time called Live in Max's Kansas City, Johnny Thunders and Heartbreakers. essentially heard live that whole album right from that time period and uh, yeah that was I think with that sort of thing is and apparently right now I can't stop talking so I have to just continue um, <laughs> <laughs> at uh, I think it's an age thing I think everybody's favorite concert maybe and the best ever is probably when they're a teenager there's just so much excitement there's so much happening and it's like this you know, it's so full that, I don't know, something about it. So I think that's my favorite rock and roll concert of all time. Uh, not that I was asked, <laughs> but I'm just telling you. So anyway, New York was the place I wanted because I had that visit there. I was so excited and energized by all. I heard the contortions, which are also a guy yeah, from, Milwaukee. from Milwaukee. <laughs> I don't even think dude was from Milwaukee, but I heard him in New York and uh, and a bunch of other people, too. We were, we were rich we and hell, boy Reed, television, television, television. Ramones, Everybody say it. Television. Talking heads. Yeah. We got to say Blondie, too, because they were around that time. We just did a show uh, with them in Spain, and occasionally yeah. we're on the same circuit with them now. What was the name of the stage there at Riot Fest? You remember, it was like, not oldies, but... Roots. Roots. Roots stage. You were, we, we now get to play the Roots stage, which I guess means a year of, of, of a certain age. Yeah, well, we've been around for 33 years, and of course, then... And they've been around for like 40. We've I been think. playing the same music, and it was called punk, then it was called new wave, then it was called alternative, then it was called indie rock, and now, what do they call it? I don't know what they call it, but the music well, has stayed they, the they same. they is you. What do you guys call it now? <laughs> what do you call what we do? See, they call out <laughs> the call some of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. If you have enough of a recognizable thing, then you don't get related to something else, I guess it's just that. Tell him all I'm stuck on this lovely girl.
probably Great. think of ourselves more as part of a, an ongoing continuum of American music that even predates what they call rock and roll. You know, because a lot of our influences are early jazz, early blues, acoustic blues, acoustic folk music, and country music. And then, of course, all that stuff got together, and the and the actually the races mixing together. Uh, created rock and roll and and the things that happened after that. So we just, I mean, I, I don't think of us as being part of a like 70s or 80s. I think we are playing the music of the last 100 years in in America, really. <laughs> some song about something and something got together and had a little baby called rock and roll. Yeah, blues I'd never had a liked, baby and they called it I rock and roll. I never liked that song, but it comes to mind, yeah. right? The blues and who had a baby? Blues. Just had blues? A baby. Yeah. With who? With the country music, but they didn't mention that yeah. in the song. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> 